is must be one trait that each one of us have that makes us a decent human being. You know, everyone always says, listen, you know, my friend, yeah, he doesn't really keep anything, but he's a good guy. He doesn't keep any mitzvah, but he's a good guy. What makes him a good guy? And usually people say the same thing. He's generous, or he's funny, you know, makes people laugh. It's a very good character trait to have. Uh, you know, he's, uh, I don't know, he's smart. I don't know, there's different things that people say about people. And, uh... It's great. It's good to have a good character trait. It's necessary. And what Chazal is telling you here is that that one character trait that you have, usually there's one that you're amazing in. There's probably a few that you know. There's probably a few that you're good at. Maybe you're generous and you're smart. Maybe you're, uh, you know, you're uh, funny and you don't really get angry quickly. It's great. But you're stingy. You give $18 to the, uh, to the guy who puts the car, you suffer for a week. You're like, oh, kapat of Hashem, what kind of sins have I made? I have to give this tzedakah. Ah, ilano, ilano. Guy gets $18, he wants to kill himself. So yeah, so it's good that he doesn't get angry. It's good that he's smart. It's great. But the fact that he's stingy means he has a little bit of a little bit of nasty things on him, he has to fix it. A little bit lichluch. So, but you have to use that one character trait and build on it. So first and foremost, every one of us knows something that we're good at. Something that we are good. People compliment us for it. They say, oh yeah, you Sonny, you're very creative. You know. A, uh, you are smart. You are this. You are, you know, people always tend to tell you certain things. Or you feel about yourself. Listen, I may not be this, I may not be that, I may not be this, but I know that I am X. Whatever that is. Start learning about that midah. Start learning about that character trait and really start comparing yourself and where you are with this character trait to the ideal situation. You start learning that you're not as good as you think, first of all. But even more so, you can build on it. It's much easier to build on a foundation than on nothing. So start building that one. Start developing. If you're a extra funny, I don't necessarily recommend start learning jokes, but you get my point. Start learning how to use humor in a positive way that's going to improve people's lives and not just make fun of people. Start using your intellect to learn holy things instead of Tov Hashem. So build on the character trait that you have until you get to a point where you feel very, very confident that this is a character trait. You are as good as you can be. Then move on to the next one. Then move on to the next character trait that you know you're terrible in. You're a typical Israeli that gets angry as soon as a, uh, you realize that your fly is open. As soon as your kid gets in the way of you leaving the house, you get angry. As soon as your wife says something you can't hear it, you get angry. So you, get, you're, you have an anger problem. That's the one you have to work on next, my friend. Why? Because if we leave this world without working on that midah, we're going to show up to Shema and say, oh yeah, you're the idol worshiper from, uh, from Boca Raton. You got angry every day. Every time you get angry, it's considered idol worship. You got a problem. So you have to start working on anger. How do I stop being angry? It's very, very difficult, but you have to work on it. And so on and so forth, but the chidush here is that Chazal is telling us, Rabbeinu Yonah and Meiri are telling us that the perfection in one area is preferable to partial success in multiple areas. Meaning, you perfect one midah, it's much better than you being decent at a bunch of them which is a completely opposite of what I've ever learned in my life from self-help books and other things, 
they usually tell you you should be a you should know a little bit about everything. A lot of a lot of people, I say many people, pretend like they're smart. How? First of all, they use big words. They don't really know what they mean, but they use big words. So sometimes, what do they do to learn these big words? I've actually had employees like this, and people that you know, have come to my door, and they use these big words, and I ask them, what, what do you mean? Because I don't know. And they explain it to me, and you know, sometimes I actually did know, or sometimes I'll just check, and it doesn't mean that. Um, but they, what they do is, because they are trying to sound smart, they start learning the dictionary. Instead of you know, learning it from a book, they learn the dictionary. It's not exactly the ideal way of learning big words. You know, just learn big words that people use. But nonetheless, many people try to or feel like they're even smart because they know a lot of different subjects, but a little bit about a lot of them. So they get all the conversation. And this is actually very common amongst the current generation, the millennial, millennials. There's, you know, there's a wealth of information on the internet. Every millennial, every young kid, you know, spends 80% of their day in the internet and they read a bunch of different things so they feel like they know everything because they know a little bit about everything they could hold a conversation for you know 15 minutes an hour about everything but if you ask them any skills real skill set they have many of them don't have any skill sets you ask them if they can you know wake up and be at work at 8 o'clock in the morning many of them can't so it's better to think like the Torah. The Torah is telling you, first, be a master of one. Instead of being a jack of all trades, you have to be a master of one. Excel one major character trait. Why? Why this one character trait? Because of the whole concept and teaching that we got from Mount Sinai, which is mitzvah, go ahead, mitzvah. Once you have a character trait that's strong, that's the foundation that's going to encourage you to build another one. Because now that you've excelled the midah of money, you have zero desire for money. You care less. To you, it's purely paper. To you, it's purely a hammer, like a tool. Someone needs money, you don't ask, you don't negotiate. Just, oh, this is what it is. Sounds fair, fine. Good luck to you. Whatever I deserve, a is going to give me. You're not wasting valuable Torah time negotiating with people. You're not wasting valuable Torah time searching to save three dollars. You know that whatever you deserve, Hashem is going to give you. And in reality, it's just money. The guy says he wants 400, you give him 400. Okay, so you can get it for 380. Okay, so you can get it for 420. But who cares? It's money. It's a tool. Okay, so I could smash the nail this way or I could smash it that way. It's going to get there. Fine, let's just do it. Move on, move on, move on. It's just paper. It's not something you're connected to. You're not constantly thinking about it, talking about it. You're not making your life's decisions because money is such a, you know, big yetzerah in your life. Oh, yeah, you want to have a, uh, you want to get tefillin? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Let's, uh, I need tefillin. Let's do tshuva. Okay, great. So I'll get you tefillin. Uh, which one do you want? Oh, they cost money? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're not really at a level where, you know, we get man from Shamaim or tefillin from Shamaim. I mean, they do, people make these. It takes a year to make a tefillin. You want to get a decent tefillin, it's going to cost you some money. I mean, I don't know, a little bar mitzvah boy is going to buy four, five hundred dollar tefillin. Someone that's a grown-up usually spends thousand, two thousand on a serious pair of tefillin. You want to get the bar mitzvah boy's four hundred dollar tefillin. Chazak I mean, you're 35 years old. You shouldn't really be getting a four hundred dollar pair of tefillin. Unless you absolutely have no money. But if you have a regular job, you make sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year, you should spend a little bit more than four hundred dollars on tefillin. It is your direct line to Hashem. I mean, let's 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 start thinking about it. It's not a beeper. You spend eight hundred dollars on your phone without asking questions. You stand online for a week to get the newest iPhone for a thousand dollars. But it's filin, oh come on, thousand dollars for the love. You have something cheaper? Yeah, I have something cheaper, but thirty years old, buddy. You made $150,000 last year. What's wrong with you? So if money controls your life, you have a problem. 
You have a serious, serious problem. Somebody tells you, listen, we're raising money for some type of chesed, for kiru, for helping people, for this, for sefer Torah, whatever it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, and you give $20 like it's like a, uh, like you just gave your lung. What about the $400,000 portfolio you have? What, it's all in Google? Take $20, take a few thousand dollars out of it. You can't take the money with you. When you're so close to money, it'll be very hard for you to give it. Why? Because if you love money, you're never going to want to give it. No person in history that loved money was ever generous. At least not for the right reasons. So now the next question should be, how do you explain all of these people that are rich and, you know, they love money more than anybody because they work even though after they have a billion dollars they still work. How do you explain that they give so much? It's a good question. The real answer is there's a benefit to give. There's a tax benefit to give. So in essence, they either give it to the hospital as charity or to save the dolphins charity or something or to save a butterfly from being extinct. They either give it to them or they pay it to the IRS. So might as well give it to the butterfly and look good in the media like I'm a tzaddik. So, it's very important that once you've overcome this midah, once you've gotten to a point where you're no longer cheap, you're no longer angry, you're no longer whatever that midah is, you are, you've excelled, you're a superstar in this midah, you've got a lot to work on because there's many midot, but you have one that can serve as your foundation, both to get to the next level, to work on the next one, plus as your foundation to stay close to Hashem in case you fall in your tshuva.